Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from the Javits Center in New York City here at Strata and the New World. I'm here with Ben Werther. Ben, how you doing? Uh, very good, thanks Mike. Now you're with Platforum. Yes, I'm the CEO of Platforum. Okay, and you gave a talk this morning and you had three main points about the talk and can we unpack those a little yeah, bit here? Absolutely, yeah, we talked about uh, over the last year, I was on stage a year ago giving a, a keynote again, just like this one. And over the last year, we've seen sort of three major things emerge in the industry. They you have know, changed from last year. They've changed, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. You know, what, the first is really Spark as a technology has emerged as kind of the the dri way that people are driving Hadoop. And, yeah. and, and that's really exciting because it means that I think before there was a fixation on we were all headed towards just, just recreating SQL. And I think now this, the, it's a much more uh, robust and diverse way of uh, extending that with new types of algorithms and processing. And so Spark as a foundation is, is a big one. Um, I think the second one we saw, which we've seen, and it's probably something we're, we've been very close to because of the, the way we engage with our customers, is shift from uh, this, is, this whole thing of being about IT and big data as an IT initiative to being something where the, the business analyst, is, you know, the center of gravity is shifting to business analysts who are subject matter experts and trying to solve problems, whether it's in marketing or cybersecurity or product experience or what have you. And, and they've classically been disenfranchised and now it's, it's really important that these users who are the ones that need to drive insights from the data actually have a lot more control of the data and that's a positive shift. Um, uh, and then the third one we've seen is really about um, the questions, the, the new questions people are asking, going beyond just siloed, I want to go roll up and draw pretty pictures, to what we call multi-structured questions. And multi-structured means people are trying to connect the dots across transactions, customer interaction, so all the digital touch points yeah. of web, mobile, social, etc., and machine data, which is really about the experience to deliver, the products, the devices. And you think about these three worlds, they are coming together, and if you can't ask questions that connect the dots and understand behavior and understand outcomes, if you're just drawing pretty pictures on silos, what do you really know? And so that those three seem to be central to kind of where we see the next phase of uh, going. It, it almost seems like it's a U UX experience or a data experience that I think it's a whole need. workflow. I mean, yeah. it's because I think that the problem you see then is if you, if you take those as the requirements of the space, um, there's, these, there's these sort of two worldviews, you know, the classic BI and data warehousing companies um, they want to fit everything into their worldview. They have a, a pro, they have products that are fairly rigid. They have uh, you know a lot of IT centric process steps to get up and running, and you have to squeeze data down to make it little before you can do much. And so when people do that, they squeeze out the ability to ask those multi structured questions. They squeeze out, they disenfranchise the business analyst, and they don't take advantage of the new technologies. And we we really are much more um, a huge advocate for the other approach, which is saying that we need an end to end ability and a stack that natively drives from the raw data all the way up to the analyst, allows them to iterate. So the first question is as easy as the second question, as easy as the fifth question. The and full stack, right? Full stack, yeah. and, and there's a yeah. lot of technology you've got to make seamless from the way you visualize and interact to the way you accelerate raw data to the data preparation and low level pieces. And they have to be part of one end to end stack, otherwise every time you have a breakpoint, you go back to IT and that, that means you're back to waiting and that doesn't, just doesn't work. So let's, let's, let's talk about that a little bit because to me it seems like we have, in the world, we have large companies that that probably can't just jump into a new world. Yes. Like they, they can't like uh -huh. leave their stuff behind yeah. and say, we're now doing Spark and Hadoop and we're, we're on this new path. They can, they can, they can. So how do they migrate slowly? Well, I mean, so this is the innovator's dilemma, right? I mean, yeah, this is, yeah. um, yeah. step one is you go, declare victory around the buzzwords and put it, build connectors and and try to say, no, no, we're really on this new world and but try to drag people back. And, and you see a lot of the a lot of these vendors are trying to, you know, declare, okay, we'll use Spark in some token way, we'll build a connector to Hadoop, we'll draw visitors if you once you've done the preparation. Um, but the litmus test for us and for our customers is, is simply how long does it take to go from petabytes of diverse multi-structured raw data to, to insights and then and then iterate and if that's and the difference is you know when we do it end to end our customers like you know City and JPMC and FedEx and Disney and American Express and others we're talking about things in an afternoon to get to answer these pretty robust questions before were either not possible or would have been an IT project that might have taken you know six months or twelve months or two years in some cases 
And so that's the way I would judge it. Everyone can, everyone sort of starts to sound the same in this industry. They all grab the buzzwords. But it comes down to what is the experience of going from raw to insight for regular business people? How do you not have to hire armies of data scientists and developers? And what does it look so like? So is that, is that the description of the full stack? Is it from raw to insights? Absolutely. So and all the pieces that fit in all, between all that? All the pieces from, so we're not, we're not replacing the role of the Hadoop vendors. I mean, there's a, we partner very closely with you know, Hortonwork, uh, Cloudera, Hortonworks, MapR, Pivotal, Amazon, et cetera. Um, but everything above that, in terms of the way, the experience needs to be tied together in, in, in a way that's iterative and, and self-service. And so there's a lot of hard, hard technology to build there. It isn't just about piecing together uh, stuff that we're all familiar with. I mean, you need a robust way to understand the data you have at a low, low level profile and connect it. You need a catalog of what you have. You need the ability to pick the things that are interesting and accelerate them in a, into memory at, at scale, because otherwise you're just hitting raw data that's going to take hours. And you need the ability to visualize and find patterns and do it really rich visual analysis there. And then you need an ability to iterate because whatever you do first is going to lead to the next question. And if you had to make big data small and just pull out a little extract out of that big iceberg, now when you ask the next question, you're stuck. And so this is about how quickly can you go, you know, ask the second question, ask the third question. And if it isn't one truly seamless stack that goes all the way to raw data, you're going to find that maybe you can get one question out and then it's bad, and then it breaks rather than you know, the, the, that you're really empowering the business analysts to make sense. So there were a couple quotes this morning, and you probably heard them as well. One is the companies that can process more data are going to be the winners in the next, you know, yeah. the next yeah. few years. And then the second one um, was about how quickly things are changing. Yeah. Like next year, we're going to have a discussion. And where do you see yeah. our conversation if we sit here next year at this yeah. time? Where will Platfora be, and where do you think the industry and your customers will be? Yeah, next absolutely. Year? Um, so I'll start with the, change, the changing. I think we're seeing changing at a number of levels. You know, if I look back at even you know, these Hadoop worlds back um, 2012 when we showed off our product, 480 um, people or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I should even go, go one further. Back. 2011. Okay. It was still largely about how do we make this foundation of Hadoop reliable enough to do any real work. 2012, we showed our product for the first time, Impala was showing off like some of the attempts to do kind of build SQL on Hadoop. The the idea that you needed to make this useful for the business started to become a topic. 2013, last year, uh, we saw people, now everybody's sort of focused on, okay, how do I start to bring use cases out of this and make it real? And, you know, we we're already pretty mature with what we were able to do by then. I think this year, I mean, now you see a lot of vendors that are all about trying to jump on the bandwagon of end-to-end, -end, you know, how do you get out of just trying to enable a tableau and make big data small, but do something that's really complete. Um, but I think where we're going is, um, one is we're all still, as an industry, um, educating the educating customers at some level on the use cases and the possibilities. The usage of, yeah, 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 how yeah, do you, yeah, like, yeah. what is this really, what are, like, I think we have great customer wins, but as an industry, it isn't, it isn't blindingly obvious to a new new prospective customer why big data matters, what's possible. I think that over the next you know, 12, 18 months, the, the big proof points and also the companies that get obliterated because of their lack of use of data will become more apparent. And so we're going to start to see this becoming, you know, maybe I got the Gartner, Gartner calls the uh, plateau of productivity, but where it's being used for real work in a wide, wide fashion and people understand the, the, the places, whether it's web analytics or fraud analysis or cybersecurity or Internet of Things, specifically what's possible and what the best companies are doing. Um, so this trillion dollar industry in the next year is going to kind of define what it is people are doing yeah. with the data? Yeah. Because it's one thing to get data, process data, yeah. make charts out of data, visualize exactly. the data, yeah. but to actually put it into action and yeah. make that trillion dollars as an industry? Exactly. And I think that we'll get beyond people saying, well, I can go force fit my old BI product and, and pull a chart out by a bunch of manual efforts and, and, and instead demand that they can have a, you know, a way to answer these questions in a very much more direct, you know, native approach. Um, and so I think that we're seeing that, that, that evolution. I think where you know, Spark is a great technology will play a role in this. It'll open up new capabilities. Like we, so the other part of this in terms of future proofing, so we, one of the things we announced today was uh, something we call PPE, which is Platform Programmable Extensions. 
And so the idea that you can take anything you build in Spark, any new algorithm, any new transform, so machine learning or graph analysis or whatever it is, anything that, that the community or one of your developers builds, drop it in and, and, and expose a UI on that as now a new analytical building block that a non-technical user can start to harness. And so we, want, we think that that's going to be key. How do you extend this and allow thousand flowers to bloom around new capabilities that become part of the extended toolbox, but, but always bringing it back to making regular business users super powered and not just this being the thing that the, the, the elite data scientists get Like the superpowers that John Rouser talked about, yeah. the, uh, the software engineer versus the statistician, yeah. and how it's okay for software engineers just to go ahead and use brute force in some cases, yeah. or use their machine algorithms to do what a statistician can do, maybe more eloquently or yeah. you know efficiently, but we can all get there as, a, as an industry. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that the, 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 the core constituency we see that has to be enabled for this trillion dollar opportunity to be captured is, is, is that subject matter, ex, subject matter expert, regular it's business involved. users. Yeah. It's not, it's in, the data scientists and the developers all play a really critical role, but they aren't where the, the, the groundswell happens. Right, yeah. the story may not be around them. Yeah, yep. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I forget your first question, but uh, the first, well, the first question you had as well that I, I don't recall, but uh, yeah. anyway, okay, that's yeah. right. But uh, but I think that um, I think that we're at this really exciting transition point because I think we are the idea that we're you know we're going from a BI world and a BI data warehousing world to a you know truly big data analytics Insights. world. That that, yeah. that that transition is is becoming meaningful and um, once we cut through the noise, the fake the fake big data. There was a uh, article we were quoted in talking about the contrast between, fake, just the other day in, in Forbes, the contrast between fake big data and you know, real big data, the sort of stuff, the stuff we're doing. Once we start to understand that like, just having, throwing big data into your marketing isn't the yeah, answer, well, then, John, then great things yeah, will happen. Rouser kind of talked about yeah, that, the yeah. fake, fake uh, data yeah, scientists yeah, or whatever, and yeah. I think we're all at that point right now where there's a lot of yeah. uh, maybe some magic and mirrors there that's yes. really not, Absolutely. So I mean, it'll be interesting to see when we actually go from where we are as an industry to actual instantaneous insights yeah. through the use of data. Yeah, absolutely. And we have a on our website we have a, kind of the six six key things that really, um, if you if you care about big data or you want to know why you should care about big data, how is this different than the old world? Why is it not just a buzzword? And how do you know if somebody's just using the term? versus doing it right. Yeah. Um, so I encourage Excellent. people to check out platform.com and Excellent. see that. Yeah. Well, great. Ben, thank you Absolutely. for your time. Thank you very much. Thanks.